Welcome to Evolution of Self with me, Britannia. Hello. So this week what I want to speak to you about is really the pressures that life puts on you to be perfect, to be a certain way, and how learning to listen to yourself will guide you more truly. Um, for some reason, I don't know quite why, but I was thinking back to when I had my children and and I've seen people now um, from when I was working in my one of my most recent positions, um, young people who come out with, with their babies and they're days and maybe weeks old and the pressure that society puts on families, um, I'm going to say women, but I imagine it's it's men as well, but I don't have that perspective to bounce back, to suddenly be these indomitable, indomitable people that pop out a baby and then like weeks later are back to the size they were before and doing the things that they were doing and, you know, being these super people that can just handle life and just carry on. And I remember I was one of those. I remember when I had my first son, I felt this pressure to be the sort of perfect mother to sort of recover and bounce back and be doing all the things I was doing before and just handling everything amazingly and just be a super mum. But it wasn't, it wasn't fun. In fact, it was incredibly stressful and I didn't really enjoy those days as much as I could have done. And that's not to say I didn't enjoy them. I, I really loved being a mum, but I put a lot of pressure on myself. I put a lot of pressure on myself to be what you see in like the movies with movie stars and with um, celebrities and things like that, how they have a baby and the next minute they're looking amazing. And it's not just in the area of having kids. I think nowadays, because of social media and TV and all of these things, the world has become a lot smaller. We can see into other people's lives a lot more intensely. But what we see is what they want us to see. It's the perfection of everything being perfect and wonderful and great. And there's a lot of pressure to be like that and a lot of self-criticism when we're not. Um, and when I had my second child, um, it was interesting in, in Botswana, I had them both in Botswana. And in Botswana, the Motswanas believe that you shouldn't go out for three weeks after, not three weeks, three months after you've had your child, that you should, you know, create a sort of a home. Well, everyone has a home, well, not everyone, but most people have homes. But they believe that you should stay at home. They believe that you should rest, that you should bond with the child and spend that time with the child and get to know them and to recover and to take it slowly and be supported by family, but not loads of friends, not lots of people, but just a really quiet settling in period. And I don't think I did the three months, <laughs> but I definitely took it a lot easier with my second child than I did with my first. I didn't put the pressure on myself to get out there and live this perfect kind of superhuman life um, that I thought that other people expected of me. Um, instead, I spent time with both of my children. I took it so much more easily and I so much more enjoyed it because there was no stress, there was no pressure. It was me leaning into my life and learning to live it by sensing it and understanding it and the people in it that matter to me, instead of trying to live this perfect life for these people that I don't even know, um, to put this facade on to seem amazing when actually what I wanted to do was spend time with my babies. And as I said, I'm, and I'm just talking about when I had kids, but it sort of touches all areas of our lives this need to sort of give this perfect facade to be this perfect person. But actually, it's not so much fun being a perfect person. In fact, strangely enough, actually, it's just come to me as I'm talking. The people that I care about most are the people that have allowed me to see the non-perfect side of them. Strangely enough, when we see the imperfections in people, it makes us understand them more. It connects us to them more. When we see them as human rather than as a perfect facade, um, we we can see ourselves in them and it makes our bond to them and our understanding of them much, much deeper. So while we're striving for these perfect glossed over lives, actually what we really want is deep understanding and connection, which we're not going to get when we're living in these perfect glossed superficial lives. 
So I suppose what I'm trying to share with you this week is to allow yourself to listen to yourself, to see what's important to you, not what you think the world wants to see or what the world expects of you, but rather what makes you happy, what makes you happy with the people you love around you, what you enjoy the most. Um, I know that I, one part of my family are, are very much extroverts. And although I really enjoy people and I'm very confident, I'm not an extrovert, I'm actually an introvert. So it took me quite a long time to realise that whilst I'm with some of my family, they like to do sort of um, have games and they used to play charades and they're loud and raucous and quite competitive, that that isn't me. And it took me a while to kind of not beat myself up about not being like that, but actually to accept myself as I am. I enjoy, I love people, I love being with my family, I have a, a great laugh when I'm with them, but I'm not like them in that way. N not all of them, there's quite a few of them that are similar to me as well. I prefer slightly quieter, slightly smaller groups, don't really go in for competitions and those sort of big rowdy games, they tend to make me feel a little bit anxious. <laughs> so understanding who you are and honouring that and not making yourself feel bad for it is something that's very important in life because you honour yourself and when you honour yourself you're respecting yourself and the more you respect yourself the more other people will respect you too. I hope you've enjoyed this, it's been a little rambly. <laughs> As usual there are links to my online courses, to my website where if you're interested in coaching with me you can send me a message and also to this month's um, Ho'oponopono session. Um, I'll also put a link to Ho'oponopono video should you not know what it's about. So much love from me to you and have a fabulous week. Bye-bye.